morning church I know it's cold out there good morning church morning. come on guys let's give our king a big clap offering this morning amen <laughs> come we need to warm this place up I need to feel you this morning amen, amen. all glory to God amen. I want to thank pastor Dan this morning and the leadership in allowing the men's fellowship to take the service Amen. Amen. I think most of you guys were more supportive of the box yesterday than you are here today. You know what? Camp was really a blessing to us all. We went there to encounter the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know what, ladies? You'll think we are macho and full of muscles. Amen. But men are sensitive. We get emotional. We tear. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen? Amen? So we were really blessed. Some of the tiny men came out giants there. And I want to tell you this morning, guys, don't leave it at the camp. Bring it back home. And let's show it to the world. Amen? Take your rightful places this morning. Our camp team, as you all know by now, was press on. Amen? Not pass on, we still got a lot of time on earth, amen? Uh, when I mention press on, what actually comes into your mind? Perseverance. Perseverance. Amen. Anything else? I was just thinking about it. And definitely, it's where you position in your life. At this very moment, we'll bring that thought into your head. Where you need to press on. So, if you're in a storm, if you're in refuge, whether you're in a hiding place, whether you're in a place of healing, or whether you've been really favored and everything's rosy at the moment and you're in a comfortable spot, that will determine this morning in which area you need to press on. But obviously with human nature, our database sometimes gets corrupted and we forget the fundamentals, amen? Church, this morning I just want to tell you as well, this word was basically based on what happened on the weekend. It's a summary of the word on the weekend, amen? When I say when we forget some of the fundamentals and when we need to press on, what does Matthew 6.33 tell us this morning? Amen. He tells us to seek him first. Amen. Do we forget that when we're in that storm, when we're in that place of refuge? Sometimes I think we do. Philippians 4.13 this morning. But seek, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? 1 John 4.4 4 tells us, Greater is he that is in you that is in the world. So why I'm saying when we're in that storm, we forget these basic instructions that God is telling us. God's word is alive, amen? amen? Do not ever forget his word is alive. Our camp scripture was Philippians chapter 3 verses 14. And we read, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I mean this morning how fitting was it that the men take the service when communion is being served? What is the prize that we are talking about here? What is the prize? When God called me heavenward, we are talking about an eternal prize. Not a prize that's just for a season, but it is an eternal prize this morning. Let's be honest, and I'm surprised it wasn't mentioned in the notices or no one cracked a joke about the Springboks. 
But three weeks, we were on edge. We were really blessed with a, a top World Cup. And I think some of us got the rugby fever. In fact, you can see there's a lot of people that had the rugby fever that didn't attend church this morning. But what I'm saying is, what we witnessed yesterday was awesome. Awesome for the sport, awesome for South Africa. But how long is it going to last? How long is the Springboks going to be the champion? The World Cup is held once in four years. So that's for a season. Amen. Hey, that is for a season. But God is eternal. Amen. I'm talking about rugby today. And I love sport. I know a lot of you love sport. Yeah, it may be different sports. Like brother Brendan Jonkel, he loves Formula One. Dr. Rogers, I think he loves all sports. He can watch everything. Pastor Andrew, I'm not sure about you. But you know what? Generally, men love sports. And just thinking about it, if you think about a professional athlete, what does it take a professional athlete to succeed? Or should I ask you, what should be the traits of a professional athlete this morning? Number one should be ability. Number two, leadership. Number three, consistency. Obviously, if you're a professional athlete, there's big money involved as well. So you consider longevity. You can't just play for a season and get blown away. Amen? The ability to overcome adversity, overcome some sort of setback. Now I'm talking about this from the point of view of a professional athlete now. A few years ago, well, the only captain before, Sia Colisi, uh, Richie McCaw, uh, he once said, sometimes the worst experience are the ones you learn the most lessons. Amen? Does that make sense today? We should apply that in our lives. There may be more people that's more talented than you and I. What is stopping us this morning from working harder? We should continue to work harder, even if there's someone else more talented than us. Amen? Because we got the Lord on our side. The verse, Philippians 3, verses 14, tells us that there's a prize to be won. Amen? Amen. I'm going to go back and read the verse before that, verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I repeat that. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Even when our brother Nelson Knight did the camp review, he, to he told you guys, forget about the past. Look to the uh, uh, future. Amen? For us, what is winning? For us, winning is salvation, amen? Winning salvation from God this morning. It means that we win our eternal prize, amen? You know what? Even when we did communion, Pastor Dan said, he was nailed to the cross. Amen? And he rose again. He died for our sins, amen? To win Jesus this morning, you have to admit your imperfections. You have to Im admit your sins. I've said in the past as well, admit you're a sinner and you will be a winner this morning. Trust in God for he is the eternal prize. Just looking at the team sport again, if you look at it, 
Khaleesi, he got taken out. The New Zealand skipper, he got a red card. Two pivotal players in the side. What that tells you? No match is just won by one player. Amen? Although he was a pivotal, important player, the team still had to jail. Amen? And I'm telling you today, brothers and sisters, we as Christians, we belong to the team. Amen. I think the Bible puts it in a more formal way and says, we belong to the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So what tends to happen? If one turn tends to lag in a department or in a certain area of his life, what is it the duty of the teammate? It's to assist, to encourage, amen, to lift his partner up this morning. We can't leave someone down this morning, amen. God has given us that gift. He has given us that authority. He has given us that word. That word should be instilled in us this morning. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12. The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So is it with Christ. Amen. Now we look at the Springboks and how they succeeded. Nail biting, but if you looked at them on the pitch, ah, uh, what can I say? They weren't as fancy as the other teams, but they played to their strengths. But we see them on that pitch, putting out their lives there, not worried about their bodies, amen? But it just doesn't come from going on match day and we seeing, hey, wow, these guys did well. It's all the background work they do. It's all the muscle building. It's all the endurance, the muscle endurance strengthening, the coordination. It doesn't just take days. It takes years, amen? When you train well, you do well. Amen? Christian's life is a bit different. Our training starts when we want salvation. Amen. Just like the Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 8, train yourself to be godly, for physical training has come as some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise both for the present life and the life to come. How do we do this? In our day-to-day -day life, how do we do this? We say no to the wrong things. We need to be strong enough to say no to what is not right. In doing that, we start building up our godly muscles. Amen? So we do what's right in God's eyes to build godly, our godly muscles this morning. We pray together, even as a church, home groups, cell groups, our Bible studies, our worship teams. Every time we obey God, we grow our muscles, our godly muscles. Amen? So, if I'm looking to some of you guys here, yeah, if I look at Brother Dio, he's a little bit scroungy. I look at Pastor Andrew. Oh, wow. He's all muscular this morning. Uh, if I look at someone's a bit bigger, I don't want to mention any names. That doesn't make a difference, amen? That doesn't make a difference. It's not about your physical muscle this morning. It's about growing that godly muscle, amen? Every team, as I said, there should be a captain to follow. What is a captain? Or what is the duty of a captain? A captain's duty is to lead. A captain's duty is to inspire. 
A captain's duty is to boost the morale of a team. A captain's duty is to lift somebody up when they're down. So a captain has a lot of responsibility this morning. Who is your captain this morning? Our captain is Jesus Christ. But you know what? He goes as Lord Jesus Christ. So the word Lord pulls rank on the word captain. So our captain, Lord Jesus Christ, he has the power to make us stronger. He has the power to lift us up. He has the power to take us from that place of refuge into a place of miracles, of blessing, of favor. So just pray and ask of God this morning because anything is possible with him. Amen? Sometimes the match is hard when we feel like we're losing. Amen? It's hard to get back into the game. Think about it. You must have been in some situation that dictated, you know what, I'm not going to make it out of here. But you know what? With Captain Jesus on board, we can come overcome any situation this morning. You know what? Just lead. Let him lead you this morning. Let him guide you for this morning. Remember, children of God, we have a pri prize to win this morning, a team to join this morning. We have a captain to follow this morning. My question to you is, are you joining the right team this morning? What happens to a player when he gets injured? Normally, the medic will come onto the field, and it depends on the severity of the injury. He's either stretched off, or he walks off the field, or he goes straight away to the hospital and is checked up. So similarly in life, you know what? Life throws us curveballs. You know when we seem to be getting closer to God, when we're getting closer to Jesus, the devil, he tries to take us off that straight and narrow path. So that's the time we ask God for more help, just to keep us on the straight and narrow, and that holy path. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you this morning, children, what God promises, God provides. Amen? Amen? Obstacles this morning don't have to stop us. We have the answer, we have the solution in God. If you think you're hitting that wall, ask God to make that plan. Go around the wall. Or even if you have to climb the wall this morning. You know what? In Matthew 17, verses 20 and 21, God tells us, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, just imagine the size of a mustard seed this morning. And if we tell a mountain to move, that mountain will move. So even if you can't go around that wall or over the wall, pray to God, he'll take you through that wall. That's how great and mighty our God is. We serve a God that is limitless this morning. Amen? So never let doubters get to you this morning. Let no one look down on you, but be a good example unto others. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great clouds of witnesses, let us throw everything that hinders and the sin that so uh, easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance and the race marked out for us. Whatever sin entangles this morning, don't entertain it. Amen? If you do, your situation of pressing on comes to void. 
So cut it off. Take it off. And run with perseverance this morning. Allow Jesus to be your motivation to keep pressing on. Win the competition the right way. Do what is needed to have self-control. Fight through the struggle. And church, it's important to keep your eyes on the eternal prize. Do not let your eyes stray. Keep your eyes on the eternal prize. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. No matter what the situation, you keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. And you press on towards that finish line. Do not look back this morning. But look forward. Be a good teammate. Teammate. Teammates help each other out this morning. Be plugged in. God never, ever load shed. Amen. If you watched a bit of the cricket yesterday, when the presentation was being done, the stadium went dark. And I'm thinking, wow, are they just doing this because South Africa won? But it was just part of the presentation, amen, with the fireworks. Matthew 18, verse 18. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. God is giving us that authority this morning. Amen. This morning I want to tell you, increase, increase your positivity. Let positive things come into your life. Release this morning. Release. Loose it. Negativity. Anything that is negative, loose it. Cut it off. Throw it away. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession. That you may declare praises of him. Who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. How many of you know this morning that God has a blueprint for you? What is a blueprint? Blueprint may be a plan. But I'm telling you this morning, God has a design plan for you. He's already plotted out your life. He's already drawn your path. And he knows if we stray up off that path, but we call upon his name. We admit our imperfections. We admit our sins. That our blueprint belongs to us. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Children of God, you know what? This camp team press on. I think it, it, it was something the men really needed. With following up what happened over the last few years with COVID, with many losing their jobs, many losing their finances, many during COVID lost family members. Their hearts were broken. Some haven't still recovered. So some of us are still in that place of refuge, in that place of hiding. But God is telling us this morning, church, even as we stand this morning, God is telling us this morning, 
that we should ask him. Amen. That we should open our mouths, open our hearts this morning and ask of him. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to call the worship team to the front. Hallelujah. Church, even as we sing this song this morning, I know that you are going to give us the strength this morning just to open our mouths, open our hearts unto you, Father. Father, we pray no matter the situation in, there is no situation that is too big for you this morning, Jesus. And we believe in you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Then before I pray, I just want to draw your attention to a very important portion of scripture. And the scripture is this one. Wake up, you mighty men. That's God's word for you today. Wake up, you mighty men. Lying inside of you is something mighty. And God is wanting you to draw your God is wanting to draw your attention to that which is like a giant sitting inside, ready to rise. And you can give birth to that today by saying, Lord, I'm available for you. I'm going to use that mightiness that you have specially set aside and reserved for me for your honor and for your glory. Father, like you did to Gideon, you do to all of us even here today. You are calling us men of valor. We're not just anybody. We're somebody important for this time and for this season. You're calling us out to God from where we are to get onto the path of God that will show us our destiny. I pray, Lord, that you unearth, oh God, and reveal these things that are inside so that they will become evident to us and so that we can pursue the more important things in life. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for choosing us and for placing us here today. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be directed towards us. Yes, and that every man that is here yes, present yes, will know that he is yes, appointed by you yes, for a time like this. Yes, and may we rise, O oh God, yes, and may we understand our importance. Yes, to, and may we understand, O oh God, that we need to connect and connect quickly. Yes, we pray for your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on everyone that is present. May there be a sharing inside that will shake us, O God, and put us on the path that we need to take. Bless each and every one, Lord. Bless all the men. And we ask, O God, that you bless all the females also, every one of us that are present here. Lord, the same thing is directed to all of us. We all are called. Yes, Call for this important time. Yes, help us to rise, Lord. Yes. And help us to look beyond ourselves. Yes, help us to look at those that are in need. Yes, it is our time to do that, Lord. Yes, we don't yes, think that we can do that, Lord. Yes, and now may the grace of God and yes, the love of His Son, yes, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us this day always, even till Jesus comes and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Amen.